people ask me questions on different topics related to my videos. One way is go to my channel, which is a slash C slash DIY USA. Once you get to my channel and you scroll down and you see many playlists, talk about different topics. But this is still not detailed enough. Therefore, on my website, www.diyusa.org, I set up a page called the techniques. On this page, I try to break down different topics related to my videos. And I create a link here, for example, general heat fusion techniques and how actually it works. I have a playlist where you click on it, you will go to see the videos. And uh, there was a question about a demo for joining two 4 millimeter sheet of Coroplus, 1 minute and 40 seconds into the video, you will find that particular demo. And I will keep on updating this web page to include more items so people look at it and can point you to a specific topics. Let's take a look at the recording of the class. I look at many ways of building bowls. I look at fiberglass, wood, uh, inflatable is one that I have been considering, but at the time, because to fuse the fabrics together, you need a very high temperature. Not until a few weeks ago, I found out there's a kind of a fabric which called it pet raft, uh, which I can fuse the skin together by just regular iron, which uh, will fuse the fabrics together at around 200 degrees C, or around that number. Uh, of course, people know about stitch and glue foam. I try to do foam also, uh, but because of the requirement of the boat, the first requirement is it has to be fold, folded together and easy to store. Uh, based on that number one requirement, then I have only two choices, or maybe three choices. Uh, both first two choices are all plastics. The third, the third one will be a uh, what was it? Inflatable, yeah. And I don't want to spend a lot of time building bolts. Uh, right now, using Coral Plus, I can build a brand new design in twelve to fourteen hours, and if I build it again, it will shrink it to two thirds of the time. And I don't want to invest a lot of tools either. Uh, I I try to, the less the tool, the better. And again, the bow has to be light. And I, I then I don't want to spend a lot of money building a boat. Uh, can it last 10 years? No, it's not my goal. If it, it can last two, three years or four years, uh, if I can repair it, then I'd be happy because uh, for now, all the bowls I build, I use it for one year Then I, at the most. Then I, I have a new design coming out and I don't want to use the old bowls anymore. Uh, not until in the past year, I, I've been coming up with better design, which I intend to keep for a while. So those are main reasons for me to, to build a boat. Uh, and also, I've seen people using Core Plus building a boat and it's like a box. <laughs> <laughs> which I really don't want to. I, I want to look like a boat. Uh, it may not, it may not be very efficient as in the early earlier designs, which uh, at the tail, which is not that hydrodynamic. But in the last uh, starting last summer, I've been start building boats more hydrodynamic. And also, I build a boat at this point mostly uh, under ten feet. There's a good reason for it because. Anything 10 feet and over, I have to get the water access permit, uh, which costs money. And if I build a bowl for saleable, if I build it over 12 feet and I have to register the boat, then that means uh, there will be more cost to it. Uh, having under 10 feet, I can paddle it uh, in Oregon here where I am, and I can paddle at the lake in Washington and many other states because under 10 feet is not really that regulated. And I don't even need to get the water access permit. Uh, and I usually bring boats to the river for friends to, to paddle, to play with. Then it, that means if I'm doing more than 10 feet, I have to spend more money getting the water permit. 
Now, it doesn't mean that I will not building a bow bigger than, larger than 10 feet, which I have plans, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. One thing is, uh, in this meeting, it's a Zoom meeting, you are welcome to stop me and ask questions, okay? To some, they may not know what corpus is. As you can see nowadays, the election is coming out, you'll see many signs popping up over, over the roadside. And for corpus, uh, even though the same thickness doesn't mean that they have the same quality, I ordered some com uh, samples from China, and for for four millimeter coral plast, it can be very strong. Uh, depends on what makes they inject into the plastic when they build a coral plast sheet, and also you can see the spacing of the channel is different. Uh, when I started, I ordered ordered the four millimeter thick 4x8 coral plast and that's all I can get from Home Depot and I did build two bowls uh, using that material and as, as I get my hands dirty I want to build the one that will work for me so I look around all US uh, trying to figure out if I can get a bigger sheet uh, which I didn't have luck and up I, I worked through Alibaba uh, look into China sourcing, and I even learned how to import <laughs> import coal plus into into US, and talk to the import exporter, and find anyway. Finally, I I got hold of a, around hundred sheet, uh, five feet by ten feet coal plus at six millimeter thick, and I I was able to specify what I want, uh, in addition to the x x and y the length and width. I also asked them to mix in the uh, ultraviolet uh, in inhibitant, so it, it will not deteriorate that fast under the sun. Um, at that time, all the, the white is the cheapest, all the color, depends on which shop I order from, uh, will have some cost add added to it. Anyway, once I order the sheet <laughs> uh, delivery, yeah was a headache. The, the biggest part, not the cost of the coral plast, but the cost to ship it and cost to deliver to my place. Once I have the coral plast, I keep on building boats because uh, I, I give you some idea, the cost delta, you can get the uh, six millimeter and 10 millimeter from Home Depot. Uh, they, they have a min minimum order quantity of uh, five and three, and I work out the cost wise uh, per square feet. Uh, they are pretty close to my custom order part, but then again, it's not really apple to apple because mine is bigger, and also I defined the density of the coal plus. One big issue with the four millimeter coal plus from Home Depot is it's why some somehow I'm able to work around it. Uh, it is, it is the thickness, uh, the strength of it. Uh, when I step on it, the four millimeter core plus will collapse uh, from Home Depot. So I have to be very careful not to step on it, uh, unless I have some way to even out the weight. Uh, for me, I have the six millimeter. I feel comfortable just step on it. Of course, you can double up the four millimeter to make it into eight millimeter. Or maybe even twelve. I I I actually tried I tried that and it works for me. And uh, locally in Portland here, I found there's another place called the Multi Craft, and they do have a sixty by uh, five feet by ten feet in stock, uh, but it is only four mm four millimeter one. What can I build? Uh, probably, if you watch my channels, you see I build all these boats, and there were three others or four others I didn't show up here. One one didn't work out well, and I I plan on not trying to fix it because I come up with a better idea in building boats differently. The cost wise really depends on uh, the kind of boat you want to build, and for the Gen 9 Plus, the one I put on the YouTube video, 
and also depends on what you want to modify. Uh, the main cost driver is the color plus. This is the cost I pay for for the about hundred sheet. That means I spend a few thousand dollars on getting the sheet. And I use the PVC pipe, but you can use wood strip to replace that, uh, which I tried that too. On the floor, uh, in my design, I use color plus just because I have color plus. And people can replace it with a four quarter inches plywood. It will work. I tried it on another boat. And then you have to paint the plywood and so there's a little, little bit more work to prepare the wood so it will it will not be rotten. I use the bungee core. Uh, actually, there are time using rope maybe even better because it, it will not be elastic and you can keep the final shape better. Uh, I In my design here or video, I use bungee core. A anyway, you can, with the core plus I pay for, I can build one for under $100. Now, compared to a bow uh, from, you can buy, I save quite a bit of money. And honestly, I enjoy more building bows. <laughs> Tools. You can get those pretty easily, uh, just regular cutter. Uh, I, I got this free from Harbor Freight. And I, many people, they make the full line. They don't really apply heat. Uh, especially for four millimeter thick, you actually don't really need to apply heat to make the full line. Uh, but I like to use it because uh, it, it is so much easier after I apply warm up the surface and do the full line. Uh, but if you try to go into fusing the sheet together, you will really need a heat gun because the hair dryer will not provide sufficient heat, uh, even though the heat gun. I wish it could be more powerful. Uh, uh, this is the one I got from Harbor Flight. I pay eight, eight or nine dollars. It I've been using it for a few years. It works fine. Today I buy I bought a better one, but uh, the usage is still the same. If you watch one of my video, I use the the gap between the concrete, the floor of the garage to create a V-shape to do it. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to do exactly what I'm doing. Uh, but in order to make a full line similar to a product out in the market, uh, I would suggest putting a V-shape underneath. I actually did use a piece of a 4x8 and I used a wood router to cut a V-channel on it uh, and, and put it underneath to create a full line. Uh, nowadays, actually on my newer boat, I, I don't do this much o that very often nowadays because uh, I put a piece of a cardboard under the cement floor and then I put a coral plus on top. I, I, I use a roller to do it. But I've tried to use this method. Uh, it works fine for 4 millimeter, no issue at all. Uh, this is a YouTube channel. Uh, this gentleman did a very detailed design of a Coral Plus boat. I actually watched that video many times before I get my hands dirty. And he came up with a way of uh, making a roller. The main thing is, this uh, he used a washer kind of uh, arrangement. This washer has to be the thicker the better. What, what I mean thicker is, uh, I, I, if I have my choice, I will pick about quarter inches thick, but it's not easy to find. And also the edge has to be smooth. You don't want it to bite into the coral plus. Um, this is one way to create a folder. Go to this uh, YouTube channel and they have a link to download how they make this roller. I didn't want, I don't want to incorporate, include a picture there because it's it's copyright. I don't want to copy someone else's uh, uh, credit. Doesn't belongs to me. That's why I didn't include the the, the description how how he make this roller. But uh, you can go to this link and then you can download it. Uh, uh, as for you, you may not need to copy this particular information. 
I, I create a PowerPoint, I will put it onto my uh, DIYUSA.org site. You can download my PowerPoint. Then you don't need to take notes. Have you tried a screen roller like they use for uh, window screens? Uh, I'm sharing oh, right it there. here, there it right? Uh, <laughs> Never mind. I, I have not uh, because I, I, there, there are people using it. Uh, I when I, I did go I did go and hope people look at it. I don't like the the thickness of the plastic here. It is a still to me is still too too thin. I actually use washer to create something similar. It's so easy to make this one. You can cut a piece of wood, cut a cut an edge and slide in a washer, which I did. Uh, in my very uh, in my very early design, uh, I used that. But later on. Uh, because the edge is so thin, uh, I came across a problem that it cut it by into the core first, and then it create a crack. Okay, so then uh, the way I do it is instead I went to the um, Goodwill. I brought a, a pair of roller in lines K. I removed the wheels, which is a uh, plastic, and I used a file to sh sharpen it, the edge. You can see it here, and I mount it onto the. You can mount it on a piece of wood. Uh, in in this case, I mount it on a piece piece of metal. Uh, one thing is for me, I I keep on building balls, so I want to make a better tool. Uh, so this works very well for me, and I can control the thickness. Now take a look at how much time does it take for me to build a boat. When I, I finished my Gen 9 Plus a few weeks ago, about a month ago, then I posted the design. Uh, there's a friend of mine, she actually built a two-seater boat for two, per, two people, and she wants to build another kayak. She looked at my design, she said, Hon, it's too complicated for her. Uh, for me, I want to build another kayak. Uh, my daughter got hers. I, I want to get a new kind for myself. Then I juggling, do I build a 9 plus or I build a brand new one? And uh, I went and designed my Gen Gen 12. I almost done I need three more hours. Uh, not because of the weather here. I would have got it done already. Uh, today after this session, this afternoon I'll finish the boat. This this design which is the Gen 12 here uh, is so much simpler. And uh, the the performance would be about the same as the Gen uh, Gen Nine Plus. And I start trying trying to time out time it how much time exactly would would take me to build another of this. Now, uh, one problem is uh, in all the boats I, I I built usually I don't build a a replica of my old design. I every time I build I build something newer. Because I want to implement new ideas, new ideas into my design, using that as a test vehicle. So almost all the builds I, all the boats I build are prototypes, first gen, except the Gen Nine, uh, which I saw the problem, I fix it with Gen Nine Plus. With this particular design, I try to time it. Uh, I I designed the I, I transfer the plan the plan. The kayak plan onto the call plus. See, I I purchased this one because one time when I built a boat with my friend, he he got this long ruler, and I found out oh it's really cool. So I went to Harbor Flights and spent ten dollars. This is six feet long, which works out very well for me. Uh, again, I didn't want to keep acquire too many tools, but I think I it will my money and time to get this one because I since I keep on building boats. Look at the back. Oh, the picture here. I have the stack of Core Plus I purchased. Later on, I I put it elsewhere. Anyway, it took me one hour to transfer the kayak outline onto the sheet, and that took me another hour and a half to create all these four lines. The one in blue. Plus, putting the bow. Uh, okay, uh, the way I I I do it is. Because my core plus is six millimeter, I really need to need to apply heat before I can uh, create a full line. For four millimeter, you 
you don't really need to apply heat, but I still like to. After I apply heat, you see the, I have spacer, uh, so that I I will trap the heat between the two spacer here, two, two wood, this is a wood piece, this turned out to be a metal piece I have. I put another plywood. You you actually can use a cardboard because the heat applied on to the core plus uh, is not that high. Uh, if the if the if the cardboard melt, that means or, or turn brown, that means it's too hot. Your core plus will be melt already by that time. So after I apply heat on it, then I use the roller to create a full line. And this is not this is Gen 9 plus, not the Gen 12. I didn't take the picture. Uh, after you make the fold line, the first step is trying to fold the bow into a shape, uh, a bow shape. Uh, Gen 9 plus takes a little bit a little bit more effort because of the shape. And usually, <clears throat> it would be good to have two people helping helping another another person helping you out uh, because uh, sometimes it takes quite a bit of effort. I usually allow an hour to forward the first time. But with my Gen 12, it, it, it was pretty easy. Took me about maybe 40 minutes or something. I, I, now, the, this, this is the shape of the bolt after I forward. So to get into this shape, uh, I spent one hour transfer the shape, uh, the plan onto the core plus. And then hour and a half to do the fold line and also fold into this shape. So from from the starting to this shape, it took only two and a half hours, which is pretty fast because of the design is simpler. For other boats, sometimes it takes four hours, but this design is pretty good design. Actually, I look back. <laughs> uh, I I try to use a PVC pipe to create a long strip of metal. Uh, Long, long strip of uh, plastic like this for the gunnel. Uh, using PVC pipe, the good thing is it wouldn't like wood, it would not rotten, and uh, I don't have to prep the material. Uh, the the drawback is it took me <laughs> one hour to make two piece of this uh, flattened PVC pipe, four feet each, because after I heat it up. I have to step on it, uh, press on it until the PVC cools down. Otherwise, it wouldn't retain the shape as being a flattened PVC pipe. Of course, I can use water to help to cool the PVC, but it's getting messy. So end up I spend one hour just doing two pieces of this plastic. It took me 30 minutes to do one piece. Then I embed it onto the side wall of the core plus. It is very similar to Gen 9 Plus. I I switched to using plastics now instead of wood. Uh, I one one good thing about using a five feet wide plastic or uh, coral plus is because I have extra width, which I can fold the coral plus backward and fuse it to the side. What it does is it makes the wall much stronger and you feel it, it feels solid. Um, and for this particular design, I try to make it so that I can remove this plastic sheet uh, piece out if I want to. It is a new test. Uh, for Gen 9 Plus, I simply embed it inside, not thinking about removing it. So by the end, you see the gunnel here, it is solid. The, the reason I want a solid gunnel is in case the boat flip over and I need to do a climb back into the boat and uh, the gun, the, the stronger gunnel will allow me to climb in easier. If it's a flimsy one, I, I don't think I can even climb in. Or in addition, I need to do a crossbar. There's a reason that I add the crossbar is in case the boat flip over, I need to get back into the boat. I need to hold on to the crossbar and climb, climb back into the boat. Another usage of the cross beam is uh, to boarding and um, uh, get onto the boat and get off the boat. Uh, there are certain ways using it to stabilize the boat. 
Now, one different design on this Gen 12 is I rather than having the on Gen 9 Plus, I have a little bit like many kayak. They they have enclosed the stern and bow. In this one, it's more like a canoe, which is open. Um, so eliminate. So it makes the design easier because I eliminated uh, the need to create the the deck, the the cover on in, in the front. But then I still need a structural strength to holding the kayak together. So I again I use the core plus to create a port cut here, and then I slide in a piece of a PVC pipe, a banded PVC pipe. So it makes the uh, assembly faster, and so far it seems to be working out. Pretty good. Now, after I create a bow shape, then I need to think about how I can fold it into a smaller form factor so I can transport, I can move it to the river. Before I do that, I I I do something like the Gen 9 Plus. Uh, I I feel a triangle here. Uh, I still using core plus, which I use a thinner core plus. In this case, I use four mm, four millimeter core plus, fused onto a six millimeter core plus, and I I believe I can use other plastic sheet because the main thing is to stop water from coming into the boat. Now, building the building the bow, create a bow and the stern. Uh, and that took me two and a half hour. I, I give you a summary of the total time timeline. Then I, I go back in and try to create a phone line. As I mentioned earlier, when I design a boat, I always look at the boat, uh, keep on changing it. Initially, I didn't want to fold the boat this way, but later I, I look at it, it would be a simpler method for me to fold the boat, like the Gen 9 Plus. Initially, I want to make it a very different way of folding the boat. Anyway, I created this four lines, and uh, as I mentioned, I attach another piece of a uh, core plus here, so that I can forward. Uh, on the on the product out there, they on the edges or the core plus, you really want to cover it up with something. Uh, for the product here, it looks like they have a uh, create some plastic. Uh, U-shaped kind of channels, and then they using a kind of rivet, rivet onto the core plus. Uh, for us, we we don't have that luxury, or or the, or don't want to spend that kind of money. So uh, the way I come up with is, uh, turn out I I believe is even better is I just fold the core plus backward. For example, on this side, I fold it to down by about an inch. And I fuse it onto the edge, and 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 the edge is really smooth, really nice. And th this is a, but for, but if you have a four feet wide core plus, uh, you don't have excessive, you don't have excessive, uh, core plus on the edge, except the bow you do, but only on the side you don't. Then you may use a, gorilla tape, just tape it, to protect it from cutting your hand. Is uh, one suggestion. Uh, then it then I'm able to fold into the same size as, as the Gen Gen Nine Plus, about eighteen inches, forty one forty two inches wide, about one foot thick. If you have a four millimeter thick core plus, you may want to double up the core plus. One will be four and a uh, running. Uh, forward and backward. The other one would be running crosswise, so as to create a better, stronger structure for the floor. I I believe you. Actually, I did use that uh, approach to make my Gen Two boat. Uh, but I I would suggest using three layers. Uh, you can experiment with it. After you create this floor, then uh, I I use the. Uh, Soldering iron, you can use a drill, you can use cutter to create a hole. I like soldering iron because it, it provides a very nice finish because it will melt the edge of the coral plus. And that, that's always my preference. 
using drill steel, you create a sharp edge. Then I use the uh, zip tie to mount the seat. Now, this particular seat I got from Goodwill, $5. And I have a six point mounting it onto this uh, floor. And just like my Gen 9, I will slide into the boat. And, and that, that will work for me. I I work up to this point. I haven't this afternoon. I will work on my boat uh, to finish my Gen Twelve. This is my Gen Nine Plus, which I use a cross beam uh, to to structure to to uh, provide extra structure to the boat <clears throat> uh, with Gen Nine Plus and also six millimeter core plus one beam would be sufficient. Since I use on the river, it should be able to handle the strong wicks from the multiples. And then I, I'll, I would like the other one. I will spend time doing a logo. So let, let's take a rundown on the timeline. When I start off, and in two and two and a half hours, I get into this shape, and then I spend three hours, three and a half hours more to create a bow and stern. So come up with about. Uh, six point six and a quarter. Okay, six hour fifteen minutes, and then I spend another hour trying to figure out how to fold it together. So about seven hour fifteen minutes. I, I right now my Gen Twelve is right at this point. I still need to figure out how to, uh, how to make the, the all, all these things coming up. Is I I need to figure out what's the best way to forward backward. Because it uh, depends on how much structure I want. And then uh, I add another three three hours or so to finish up the boat. What that included is uh, trying to fuse it onto the edge. And then create a cross beam. And also make the floor. Doing the floor is, takes an hour uh, for me. Uh, for you, uh, when you double up the coil plus 4 millimeter, if you have, uh, it may take you a little bit more time. Some some suggestion to uh, stack up the core plus if you have four millimeter. I tried to use a gorilla glue to glue them together. Uh, don't don't count it to be very strong, but it would be good and sufficient for your purpose. And you don't need to apply the whole surface with glue. It costs too much. And you may just do the outer edge. That would be sufficient. Uh, and then uh, or you can actually stack up two coil plus and use Gorilla Tape to take all four edges together. It will work equally well. Uh, nowadays, I don't, I don't use any of this because uh, it's cheaper. Just fuse the sheets together. It wouldn't cost me any money. And uh, it comes out also uh, pretty strong. So uh, applying fu fusion method uh, is a cost reduction. And actually, it's, it's more reliable, stronger than using Gorilla Glue. Uh, with Gor Gorilla Glue, I test it, uh, apply two together, and I pull it to pull it apart. Uh, at sixty pound, it will just fall apart. Uh, I I document in one of my video. But if I do a fusion test, if I fuse them together, and uh, one width, one square inches, one and a half inch by one inch width, it handles seventy pounds easily. And I couldn't break it, uh, but then I can only apply seventy pounds. Uh, I I have no other way to pull it apart to do a destructive test. But looking at the result of applying one inch at seventy pounds, uh, the the joint is so solid you don't see any deterioration or elongation. Uh, so think about it for a big sheet of a for a big sheet of core plus, uh, four feet wide. Uh, you seven times forty inches, about three thousand pounds to pull apart. So uh, that works really good for the usage. Now, one thing I found out recently is a uh, fusing the core plus may not give you a hundred percent watertight seal. Uh, to me, it's a little bit disappointing. But then I can fix the watertight issue by just applying a layer of a uh, core plus tape on top of the seal, uh, so water wouldn't get in. 
uh, that is a good workaround. So I do a rundown on the time here, uh, just for your reference. And again, the size of the boat is same as my Gen 9 Plus for the Gen 12. I also look into using different method of building boats. In this one, I build a... This actually is my Gen... This actually is my Gen 3 boat. Uh, so you see it flip over. That was my, my brother. He, he is new to kayaking. He couldn't balance and flip over. Then uh, I, I, I was about to scrap this boat. And then uh, I look at it. Maybe I can try use the boat to try an experiment to just use fusion to make a boat. And this boat actually the it is it's good enough for use on the river without applying any using any screw. But end up I did try to create two cross beam using screw mounting onto the boat. The reason is. I need to take this boat to the river. I'm more concerned about the wind. Uh, in order to hold it down securely, I have to use the screw, which I trust. And so anyway, it is a very light boat. Uh, I, it is a learning, learning experience because now I know I can use Infusion to, alone to, to build a boat. Um, Assembly, boat assembly to me is a big deal because my very first boat, uh, I built two boats, my Gen 1. To, to assemble the boat at the, by the river, it took me about 15 minutes to an hour. Uh, that was my first time when I built a boat. And, and then I said, no, there's no way. Now, think about it. It took me almost an hour to assemble two boats. And when I leave, I have to disassemble the boat um, another 45 minutes. And now I only spend about 30 to an, 30 minutes or to an hour on the river. And I, I already tired. <laughs> so the next boat Gen 2, I was able to shrink it down to 12 minutes. Uh, nowadays, I can get down to 3 minutes. Now, again, depends on what kind of boat, uh, for sailboat. Uh, my target time, including the rigging, maybe under 15 to 20 minutes. I, to me, that's acceptable, being more complex. But for normal kayak, I want to make it down to around three. But compared to having a boat mount onto the roof, I alone, I spent securing the boat on the roof, it took me about six, seven minutes. So it is a really good trade-off. Uh, to be able to assemble a boat, uh, this kind of foldable boat in three, four minutes, is still faster for me to mounting a kayak on top of the roof. I, I come up with new ideas. Uh, it is just my, my past experience. I work on high tech. Uh, my job was to build concept PC. <laughs> now I, I don't, I, I don't do that anymore. Then I my mind still thinking about new things. So I come up with heat fusion. I haven't seen any people doing that until I come up with that idea and keep on experimenting it. Uh, there's some goodness of this technique. It is night welding. Uh, using very thin plastics. And I end up, I was able to come up with a good way to secure the dagger board onto a sailboat. That this this technique really ha helped me to advance in doing a sailboat. Because I have a hard time trying to figure out how to secure the dagger ball uh, nicely. And another thing is using the same idea to repair coil plus. And the boat is also light. Uh, I still have many ideas in building boats and I probably will keep me busy for the next two, three years. Right now, I'm building three bowls, three designs per year, uh, three and a half to four sometimes. Uh, I, I work on this boat, probably you might have seen my video. I stopped it. Uh, I spent about six weeks. I actually, I built, built a prototype and I found out 
there's a water leakage issue, but I have solution to all this. I stopped doing it because uh, the big problem I have is I have no space to keep a boat. Uh, I built a Gen 10. I, I kept it at the porch and my wife wasn't happy about that. And if I keep on building this modular boat, now the good thing about this boat is I can modularize it and uh, make it to from 9 feet to 12, 14 feet, whatever you want to. And I can seat two people and it will be very safe. I like this kind of boat because it's safe. If I get into the water, I can get back onto the boat very, very easily. And it's also very stable because I can extend the width to make it very stable. Uh, but now, if I build, I complete this boat, I still need to find a place to keep it. I don't have space to keep my boat. Uh, this has been my, this this is the biggest headache I have right now. I have uh, keep on building boats. I find place to either recycle it, but then still some boat I don't want to recycle, like the Gen 10. And same this boat, if I build it, I, I don't want to recycle. I know I can use it for quite a few years. I, I had a headache where to keep it. I my ultimate goal is trying to build a boat uh, which can be a carry on luggage size and pack it and I've been thinking a lot about it and it will be a mix of different material uh, in order to get to that shape uh, that size. I always want to build a sunfish kind of boat and again the I I am learning more about how to do it by doing my Gen 10 using Fusion. Uh, again, still the big problem is now, if I build this boat, where do I keep it? Um, I I don't have no space <laughs> to keep this boat. Anyway, uh, many of you already know that I have a YouTube channel. You can get information here and my website. And I there, there have been many people sending me email to asking me an idea or how to build different boats and they also sent me some videos of how the boats they build which really nice that make me very happy because they can apply some of my ideas into coming up with something very interesting and uh there was a person he even built a 15 boat 15 feet long boat using call plus he used fusion at the middle and his boat is very stable and he has to carry around 700 pounds uh, that's why he built a 15 uh, long uh, boat. Uh, anyway, if you find this video useful, please give me feedback. Please subscribe and see you again. Thanks for watching. <laughs>